And Real Madrid could, could be the destination of this man you are seeing now, Kylian Mbappe, who stole the show against them for PSG at the Parc de France in their first leg last 16 encounter. Sid, you were there at this game, a field full of stars. Was he really head and shoulders above the rest? Oh, absolutely he was. Yeah, he really was. He, he was extraordinary all game long. I mean, he wasn't the only player on the pitch who played well. And all the way through the Paris Saint-Germain midfield, for example, I thought they were very impressive. And by the way, in midfield, I think I'd probably include Angel Di Maria and Leo Messi as well, because Paris Saint-Germain accumulated a lot of people in that middle part of the pitch. Obviously, from Real Madrid's point of view, Militao defended pretty well. And he's one of the reasons maybe why why Mbappé only scored at the very, very end. But but he was absolutely outstanding. Poor old Dani Carvajal. You could, you could see it after about four or five minutes. You just thought... Oh, you're in for a very, very long night. And, and this is one of the curious things about this case, that, that Real Madrid, even in defeat, seem to, seem to have won. And you look at the, the reaction from the media, the reaction from some fans, it's as if this is something to celebrate because, oh, well, you know, we lost, but we lost to Mbappé. And he's going to be ours next year. So this is fine. No worries. It's, so, it's absolutely OK. You know, he may not win the Champions League this year because of the goal that he scored. But at some point over the next 10 years when he's with us, we're going to win two or three or four or maybe more. And there has been a very, I mean, it's genuinely been quite a strange phenomenon to watch. This, this kind of idea of almost celebrating a defeat, which of course is an anathema to absolutely everything that Real Madrid theoretically stand for. But because it was Mbappe, because he played so well, because it was his goal at the end, it sort of feel, feels like something that Real Madrid could be happy about. It would have been very different if it had finished 1-0 with a Lionel Messi penalty, I can tell you that. No, it's interesting what you're saying as well, Lesid, because it seems that back in Spain, La Liga president Javier Tebas seems absolutely adamant that Kylian Mbappe mm. will be going to Real Madrid. We're hearing talks of PSG willing to break the bank to keep him and offer him a new contract. But it almost feels as though it's a given in Spain that he's coming, especially from the yeah. fans at Real Madrid. Is that the case? Absolutely. Absolutely, 100%. I mean, let, let's start, by the way, with the, with the phrase that you used there, Kay. PSG will break the bank to keep him. I mean, their, their bank is unbreakable. <laughs> they, they can throw as much money at him as, the, as they want, and it really doesn't matter. They've already done that, by the way. But yes, of course, that money seems to be increasing all the time. And I just wonder if at some point there'll be a realisation that this may not be about money, that the, the decision in the end when it's made will not be purely about money. Because, of course, there's not very much difference. And, and maybe I'm being incredibly naive saying this, but there's not very much difference between being incredibly rich and incredibly rich and a bit more. It really doesn't make any, any difference. But you're right, the, the reaction and the, the assumption in Spain is it's done. He's coming to Real Madrid. There's just no debate here. Um, now, obviously, look, until it's actually actually signed off, until he's actually standing there holding the Real Madrid shirt, then maybe there will be a small amount of doubt, but no one in Spain has that. And by the way, in terms of the way that Florentino Pérez, the Real Madrid president, um, works, the way that he acts, I find it very hard to believe that he would allow himself to be in a position in which he didn't have this legally tied up. Not just tied up in terms of Mbappé saying, yes, it's OK, I'll go, but legally tied up. Remember how he got Luis Figo? He basically got Luis Figo because he cornered Luis Figo legally into such a situation in which Figo could not back out even though he wanted to. And by the way, he did want to, but he was stuck. Uh, it's really interesting. We're just seeing that figure there on the screen, guys. It doesn't matter whether it's a pound sign, a dollar <laughs> sign, you know, a euro sign in front of that. Would that convince you to <laughs> stay at PSG, Shaka? First of all, are you, are you incredibly rich or incredibly rich plus? Well, I'll, I'll go for incredibly plus if, if, it's oh. a, if that's what you're offering me. I'm, <laughs> I'm, 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 not, I'm, I'm not quite sure. But, but to your question, Key, let's be honest. 500 grand of whatever denomination <laughs> is a lot of money. And, and that's exactly what it comes A week. A, a, a week. week. Is, is a, um, fi 500 grand and it's a lot of money anyway <laughs> to get that every week. But to, to, to Sid's point, I, I, think, I think it's an absolutely valid one. Um, let, let's be honest, whatever Mbappe earns, he's not going to be able to, be able to spend all on his own, regardless of, of where he goes. And it's where he feels most valued. Now, PSG have him under contract. He's a PSG player right now, yes. And as much as you're talking about PSG breaking the bank, you have to wonder about financial fair play, given Neymar's salary, given what Messi's on. And Kylian Mbappe, given his performances, particularly this season, has every right to go in there and demand much more. Now, Lionel Messi has earned his salary elsewhere in a Barcelona shirt. Neymar has come in for an awful lot of money. 
But if I'm Kylian Mbappe or I'm his representative and I'm looking at my performances this season and my value to the team right now, it is far more than those two. And that's where I am starting my negotiations. How do you make the, those numbers work, regardless of who your ownership is? I'm, I'm not quite sure. Look, I, I can tell you that Kylian Mbappe, regardless of the numbers, which are just ridiculous mm. to think about, all eyes were on Kylian Mbappe coming into this match because of the conversation surrounding Mbappe, Real Madrid, PSG. And we talk about players rising to the level of the pressure and expectation. Well, he picked a really, really good moment to have an outstanding game. Because <laughs> now everybody wants him. PSG saying, how can we let him go? Real Madrid saying, uh-uh, he's coming this way. Real Madrid fans are happy because they lost because Mbappe scored a great goal. That's the guy that's coming our way. You can only create that with outstanding performances, with one-of-a-kind talent, and that's what Mbappe is. And so, therefore, whether it's incredibly rich or incredibly rich plus, it doesn't really matter. Mm. Wherever he goes and he chooses to go, that door is going to be wide open for him to be the man, to be the guy. And if that's what he wants to be, it's probably not going to happen at PSG it's probably going to happen at Real Madrid. Just, listen, I know we're talking about two completely different players here, but we started the show talking about the pressures on Ferran Torres coming in yep. at Barcelona. Monday's discussion in the studio was all about Kylian Mbappe and the pressures of playing against Real Madrid, how would it affect him, and then he produces that performance. That is what big-name, world-class players, that is how they respond to pressure, and Kylian Mbappe is epitomising that right now. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching ESPN FC on YouTube. For more highlights, analysis and exclusive content, be sure to subscribe.